بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم وی آر گوئنگ ٹو ٹاک اباؤٹ ہسٹری آف فکشن ٹوڈے دا کورس ٹائٹل از نائنٹین سینچری انگلش ناول دا کورس کوڈ از ای این جی ایل تھری ون ون فور مائی نیم از اویس یوسف آئی ایم یور انسٹرکٹر فار دس لیکچر I work in University of Education, Lahore, Faisalabad campus. So let's begin with our lecture. Fiction and its detailed history. Let's begin with the definition of fiction. Fiction is something that is invented. Something that is untrue. So literature in the form of prose. especially novels that describes imaginary events and people it means that fiction has to have some imagination in it some fictionality in it something that is the invention of the mind of the author something that is not necessarily true or historical or present something that can only be present in the mind of the author etymologically etymology is the history of words so etymologically the word fiction has been derived from latin word fictus which means to form so novel short story novella or broadly speaking fiction it is formed it is made up definition of fiction In fact it is one of the two branches of literature the other being non fiction the particular branch of literature consists of stories novels dramas based on made up and fabricated stories and characters fiction contains certain symbolic and thematic features known as literary merits there are themes there are symbols that are created by fiction and fiction itself is also a fabrication it's a creation it is a formation in other words fiction narrates a story which aims at something bigger than merely a story in this attempt it comments on something significant related to social political or human related issues it means that fiction not completely can be labeled as something untrue maybe the events happening in a certain story are unreal untrue product of imagination but they have to have some relationship with the society we live in they have to have some connection with human beings with human life with its social political emotional personal individual collective affairs let's just take an example here there is a famous novella by george orwell animal farm the story is set in a farm consisted of animals 
and run over or ruled over by humans the animals one day decide to overthrow the rule and establish their own rule two pigs become the kings and what happens further that the pigs take control of the farm and start exploiting the other animals there are a few commandments written there few rules written there one of them was very interesting it was all animals are equal but the pigs having acquired power wrote all animals are equal but some are more equal than others now this this alteration of the fact symbolizes that it is very much related to our society our political arena our human issues power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely and this is completely human so fiction can have a story and characters that are unreal untrue but it has some implication significance related to our social political or human issues a work of fiction is created in the imagination of its author the author invents the story and makes up the characters the plot or story line the dialogue and sometimes even the setting a fictional work does not claim to tell a true story so having gathered all the definitions so far we can bring our discussion to a conclusion that fiction does not tell a true story it has imagination mixed in it it has fictional elements fictionality hovering over it but it is nonetheless nevertheless however related with human society related with our social political economical personal individual and collective lives instead it immerses us in experiences that we may never have in real life it introduces us to types of people we may never otherwise meet and takes us to places we may never visit in any other way fiction can inspire us intrigue us scare us and engage us in new ideas it can inspire us it means it has a relationship with our society and it can inspire in making a new set of habits in forming a new set of traditions conventions or changing the already established inventions it can intrigue us it means it is about us anything that is not about us remotely anything that does not have to do anything with us can hardly intrigue us it can scare us like the stories of edgar allan poe it can scare us again the stories of edgar allan poe they might not be true they might not be real but they scare us because we live in a kind of a similar society that is presented by poe so fiction 
can inspire us intrigue us scare us and engage us in new ideas it can help us see ourselves and our world in new and interesting ways so we can imagine having a new world by reading fiction we can imagine creating a new world by reading fiction maybe all the scientific development that we see today is a result of the product of somebody's imagination the flying cars we have maybe were a product of imagination archaeology versus fiction historically there was something like a trojan war maybe even several trojan wars in fact but the one homer wrote about in the 8th century before christ is the one that fascinates us because it is fiction what is difference in history and fiction you pick a very fine book written by a historian as history you read it through but you do not get lost in it you pick up a fictional account of maybe half the length <clears throat> but you are carried away you get lost in the words so archaeologists doubt that any trojan war began because someone named paris kidnapped someone named helen from under the nose of her greek husband that is the beauty of fiction fiction made you believe that the trojan war the great trojan war happened because of helen happened because she was lost archaeologists they doubt it they do not believe that it was a big wooden horse filled with soldiers that finally won the day and those particularized gods running the war for their own purposes deflecting arrows inciting human rages turning hearts and controlling history might have kept the greeks and trojans at it for years and years but they have no authority in our monotheistic world and you can find no trace of them in diggings in the northwest turkey where the archaeologists turn up the shards and bones of sling bullets of what might have been the real troy so fiction is fiction it is untrue it is unreal archaeology is true let's talk a bit about the history of fiction fiction is said to be invented in england in the 12th century we might pinpoint a few years around the 1150s as the crucial moment at the middle of the century england had a multilingual literary culture three languages in constant fruitful contact and a hybrid national culture in the making it had just emerged from a long and bitter civil war the conqueror's son henry first 
had died in 1135 leaving a daughter Matilda as his only legitimate heir and her cousin Stephen of Blois had seized the throne when in 1153 king Stephen finally made peace with Matilda's son Henry of Anjou who came to the throne as Henry the 2nd the following year he was accompanied by Eleanor of Equity she brought with her one further addition the culture of the troubadours the celebrity lyric poetry and music of courtly life and love which originated in southern france this was the world into which fiction would make its entrance what are the implications of the emergence of fiction for medieval society fiction is not magic it does not transform the world but fiction participates in the world's transformation we cannot say that somebody wrote fiction and transformed the world but fiction does have a place in transformation it does have a place in change that comes in the society reflects it and influences it if the 12th and 13th centuries saw a new valorization of the individual it was taken up by fiction in a great array of new possibilities tragedy began to be written again for if an individual's self fulfillment is a high goal in itself then an individual's destruction has a new considerably greater value so emerges the narrative representation of desperate love and tragic death the figures of tristan and suit wagner's i sought but tragedy is inherently a matter of this world it separates itself from the eternal justice of god implicitly or explicitly denying the force of that justice in a society where tragedy can be written something has shifted in the understanding of reality it was in fiction that the aristocratic ideology of chivalry could make its greatest claims for the secular life in the repeated spectacle of worldly knights being rewarded with heavenly favor the romance embodied the new spiritual self assertion of the elite more than this in exploring individuality fiction was participating in one of the greatest shifts in english society a new value given to the individual involves a different understanding of the nation at large not a rigidly structured whole embodied by the single figure of the king but rather a gathering of competing voices each with their own value This simple idea is the foundation of the concept of a parliament and a public sphere. Fiction provides the infinite
imaginative space in which reality can be thought of differently it does not transform the world nevertheless it is difficult to imagine a world in the process of transformation which could manage without friction what friction does in the transformation of a society of a nation is very simple currently living in the 21st century having so much scientific advancement a piece of fiction can predict a future and the real time heroes of science can embark upon a journey to find it to make it real as maybe the flying car cars flying saucers aeroplanes medical science it was all a fiction at some time in history and it became a reality it does not mean that fiction is transforming but it is there in the process of transformation it is there difference between fiction and other genres of literature literature as you know have many genres started with poetry epic it has dramas it has autobiographies biographies it is fiction so difference between fiction and other genres of literature fiction is a mode of writing in which both author and reader are aware and the and know that the other is aware that the events described cannot be known to have happened reading animal farm we know that there were never any pigs doing anything and the author knows that we know this and we know that the author knows this it's a mutual understanding between the author and the writer the reader that the events cannot be known to have happened reading edgar allan poe's the telltale heart for example we know that there was not there was no man killing an old man because of a vulture eye and the author knows that we know it this is something willing suspension of the disbelief this is not to say that they are something very like them might not have happened it also means yes that necessarily the events presented are untrue something like them might have happened the animal farm is a political allegory the events have happened but the characters the setting the dialogues they are a product of author's imagination so fiction may be set in the author's own world and obey all the rules of that world i can being an author i can pick up the events of my real world and place them in another world 
that is only there in my imagination i can change the dialogues the setting the characters the names the development the plot that is what fiction is or else i can let it remain as it is completely as it is but fiction gives an account of something unverifiable if i write a piece of fiction or if if poe wrote the telltale heart or if animal farm is there by george orwell they are unverifiable you cannot go to that place to verify whether it happened or not so fiction gives an account of something unverifiable and which does not ask to be believed only to be thought about it it's a contract between the author and the reader the writer and the reader the provider and the provided this qualification differentiates fiction from the pre-existing forms of untrue literature epic lyric both of which demand a very different response from the reader you need to pay attention to this line epic and lyric can also have untrue depiction but they demand a different response from the reader in fiction reader and author know both know reader knows that the author knows that things did not happen and the author knows that the reader knows that the things did not happen yet there is a mutual contract epic poetry offers up a mythical history of the present time with an insistence on the essential truths it contains about the nature of the past and its legacy like for example virgil's aeneid beowulf is invented but neither work is fiction why because each functions as history and as ideology correspondingly lyric poetry the old english allegories of love loyalty and loss is not fiction they are also or they can also be untrue but they are not fiction the lone speaking voice of the poem demands acceptance of the truth of its limit the author may only be imagining the emotions expressed but if the reader decides to disbelieve them then there is nothing left in the poem of value the lyric is potentially true the author knows whether or not he is describing a real experience and so it is not fiction fiction is concerned with what is unknowable this word is very important what is unknowable i'll explain it one thing about all is genuinely unknowable and it is the supreme matter of fiction that is what is going on in anyone else's mind this is fiction to approach what is happening going on in anyone else's mind what does it like to see through anyone else's eyes the author makes us see through his eyes 
when he says that the room was this long this short this was the length and width we see from his eyes when the author says that the lady coming was walking with a certain gait had a certain certain height certain weight certain features certain complexion we see through his eyes when the author tells us that in in the drawing room of a certain house there was a table of that certain length having those certain things on on it we see through his eyes it is this entirely imagined experience which fiction offers us access to the unknowable reality of other people's inner inner lives there are interior monologues like the one written by virginia wolf having stream of consciousness and what happens in that novel we go inside people's inner lives in the present day the notion that is a motivation for reading and indeed a moral justification of fiction is so well accepted that it is almost a cliche this is the last part of the lecture types of fiction there are three main types of fiction the short story the novella and the novel let's explore each of these first we have the short story according to the famous short story writer edgar allan poe a short story is a piece of fiction that can be read in one sitting of about a half hour to about 2 hours short stories contain between 1000 and 20000 words and typically run on more than 25 or 30 pages because of their limited length short stories can generally focus on one major plot the world generally is important they can have more than one plots but generally they have one plot or story line and a few characters next we have the novella the novellas are longer than short stories and tend to run about 20000 to 50000 words usually between 60 and 120 pages because novellas have more room to work with they typically have a more complex plot or story line and more characters than short stories famous novellas include robert louis stevenson's the strange case of dr jekyll and mr hyde and jack jack london's the call of the wild finally a novel is a work of fiction that contains over 50000 words or 120 pages novels are even more complex than novellas and they usually have more than one plot or story line and many well developed characters novels can be as long as their authors want them to be there is no outer limit to their length the minimum limit is 120 pages and above the outer length is not limited 
In fact, the longest novel ever written is a 17th century work, Marion Bad My Love by Mark Leach. And that contains over 2 million words and more than 13,000 pages. So there, are, there is no specified length in the outer sense. I'll talk a bit about novel as novel is the biggest type of fiction. The novel originated in the early 18th century. The ancestors of novel were Elizabethan prose fiction and French heroic romances, which were long narratives about contemporary characters who behaved nobly. The novel came into popular awareness towards the end of 1700s due to a growing middle class with more layer to read and money to buy books. Books became cheaper because of the invention of printing press and there was a bulk of middle class with layer to read, with trust to read. so novel became popular. Public interest in the human characters led to the popularity of autobiographies, biographies, journals, diaries, memoirs. The early English novel concerned themselves with complex middle class characters struggling with their morality and circumstances. If we talk about the history of novel, Pamela, a series of fictional letters written in 1741 by Samuel Richardson, is considered to be the first real English novel. Other early novelists include Daniel Defoe, who wrote Robinson Crusoe. Robinson Crusoe became very popular. Mall Flanders got its fame, although his characters were not fully realized enough to be considered full-fledged novels. And as we came towards the close of 1700s and began 1800s, there were so many authors coming. We had Jane Austen who is the author of Pride and Prejudice. Pride and Prejudice is considered one of the best novels in English, most popular ones. And Emma in 1816, Emma is included in the syllabus of 19th century novel that we are reading at the moment, considered the best early English novels of manner. So to conclude, we can say that we have gathered these four points. Number one is fiction makes us see through someone else's eyes. Number two is fiction came into being with the emergence of realization of selfhood in individuality. Number three is fiction has three major types that is short story, novella and novel. And number four is the major difference between them all is the length. Short story is the shortest, novella is longer and the novel is the longest of them all. So this is all about fiction and its history. These are a few references and I shall see you people with another lecture. Thank you. Allah Hafiz.